Man, it's been already such an intense time. It's so easy to uh, get in the mode of rolling up your sleeves and, uh, hey, we're going to plow through this. We're going to make things happen. A couple of things came up uh, yesterday, just some uh, decisions to be made, some uh, just, just working through things. And I, it was easy for me to get in that mode. I appreciate Jeremy uh, in, in, in a couple of situations uh, just saying, hey, can we stop and pray? And uh, it was a very encouraging just to just turn our hearts to the Lord to say, hey, you know, God, this is uh, in your hands. And in prayer, which we will be talking about in a bit, uh, prayer is a clear indication of where uh, where our heart is at as far as are we trying to accomplish things in our own strength or are we truly looking to the Lord and uh, yielding to Him? It's like, God, what do you want from me in this situation? What do you want us to do? And I really appreciate this training as Burke was uh, talking about. We get back to the heart of God and, and our desire it's not just to be productive and just to, uh, you know, there, there is a goal. Reach the world, and, and I'm very uh, production-oriented. I can get, I can start writing down, working out a game plan, coming up with the best strategy. And the challenge there is it, it can tend to be in my own strength. And so uh, as we, we go through this, uh, so encouraged with how the training is designed to to grasp God's heart, and that uh, first and foremost we are aligning with with God, His heart, His will. Uh, what does He want for us, and how do we connect? And so um, there's uh, we've talked about this passage earlier. This is uh, Jesus's prayer to the Father. This is in. John chapter 17, and I'm just going to read this uh, passage, verse 20 and 21. It says, I do not ask, this is Jesus uh, talking to the Father, I do not ask on behalf of these alone, but for those also who believe in me through their word, that they may be all be one, even as you, Father, are in me and I in you. They also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you sent me. It gets back to uh, uh, understanding there is a desire on Jesus' part, which he was communicating, God the Son communicating with God the Father, that this is, is my heart, um, and I know it's your heart, Father, uh, that... The people that, that we're working with, the disciples that we're making, we're leaving here on earth to accomplish uh, the vision, uh, that there is a, a, a desperate goal for oneness. And I think if we just looked at it from the surface, we'd say, okay, well, that's just a challenge for us to, uh, to work together better, to be more united with one another, to, to get the job done. And there is some truth to that, this, you know, unity among each one of us as we're working together is key. But if we, if we understand this passage all the more, there's an emphasis on our ability to be one with the Father, uh, one with Christ, and how that is accomplished in our lives, and that we're doing that together. We're encouraging one another what it means to be yielded to Christ. And that will result in, in the end goal, that this world will be reached. The world will know uh, why Christ came, what his purpose was, and, and why each one of us need to put our trust in him. And so um, if that goal is accomplished and, and our, our lives, our purpose, uh, revolve around what it means to be in Christ, then it, it begs the question, well, what does it mean to be in Christ? What does it mean to abide in Christ? 
And so we're going to take just uh, uh, the, the coming few minutes here just to talk about that, abiding in Christ. And uh, a, a key passage that if we're intent on knowing that, uh, we'll, we find in John chapter 15, just a couple of chapters back. And it's um, this picture of abiding. There is, and, and I'm, I'm not going to go over it with you right now. Uh, I'm, my goal is to have you do some studying yourself and really uh, hear from the Lord on what, what it means uh, to abide in Christ. Um, I will mention just a couple of things as, you're, uh, as you will be studying through this. There, are, um, it talks about a, a key end result will be you'll bear much fruit, and uh, I, I just mentioned I, I believe there's a, a couple of things that are emphasized in that bearing fruit. Uh, we definitely talk about that in context of people being saved and disciples being made and multiplication happening. That. Is bearing much fruit. Also, I'd say a uh, clear indication from this is that bearing fruit involves walking in the Spirit, being filled with the Spirit, displaying the fruit of the Spirit. And uh, we've seen that as well. Boy, I, to me, probably one of the uh, greatest takeaways from the, the um, three journeys of Paul. Uh, was this emphasis on when, when the saints, when, when people caught it, uh, they understood the gospel, they got saved, they uh, became part of the church, uh, there was great joy. And so uh, you just see it, the fruit of the Spirit, evident. So uh, I, I jotted down some things that um, will be the end result of abiding in Christ. I think those those things hopefully will motivate us and encourage us. Um, and and uh, again, as, as you go through John 15, here's some things that hopefully you'll pick up on. Um, one, if you're abiding, you'll be pruned. And that'll be a good one to, to really evaluate. Okay, God, do I really want to be pruned? You're going to bear fruit. It says you're going to bear much fruit you're going to bear much fruit that remains. And that's exciting. Again, what is, it's the result of abiding in Christ that that, that will happen. Uh, whatever you ask for, you will receive. Wow, what a promise. And it's connected to abiding in Christ. Um, God will be glorified. Man, hopefully that is a, a, desperate desire of ours is that God is magnified, He's glorified on this earth. And so, how does that happen in our lives? Well, it's, it comes through abiding in Christ. Our joy will be uh, great. It says it will be made full. There's this sense that uh, that that is an evidence of what it means to abide in Christ. If, man, if we're not experiencing joy in our life, that's a good thing to evaluate. Am I abiding? What does it mean to be abiding? Uh, there's other things like uh, the world will hate you. They'll be persecuted. Uh, you can look forward to that as well. And, um, and that you will bear witness to Christ if you're abiding in Him. So these are some of the, uh, the end results. But what I'd like you to do... Um, and we're going to take about 30 minutes. We've done this thing in groups before, uh, times of study. This time, I'm going to have you do it individually, okay? Just you and the Lord, the Bible, and uh, there's a page in your uh, notebook that asks three questions. And these are the three that you're going to, as you go through John chapter 15, you're going to answer. Uh, in order to be abiding in Christ, 
what you need to know, what you need to do, and what you need to be. Okay? You're going to jot down, uh, just take it for face value, what you go through in John chapter 15. You've got 30 minutes. Let's see, it is quarter till 10. So you've got till 10 15. And uh, I would encourage you to uh, get where you're not talking with other people. Uh, if you want to uh, spread out here, uh, I know it's kind of wet outside. Uh, you can use the hallway, or whatever. But uh, purpose, let's, let's purpose not to. Uh, so try not to talk with others during this time, but just you jot things down. And if you run out of things to write down, uh, pray over what you, you've written down. So uh, we're going to have, uh, just to, to give you a heads up, uh, Grace is going to help me by writing down what you find out we're gonna, when we come back together. And, and we'll get some good uh, summary points. So I want you to be thinking about what, what's some of the biggest takeaways you have. Uh, from this aspect of my so any questions all right go for it okay well, let's start in John chapter 15 and just this aspect of Jesus lays out what it means to abide in him so I'm here over one side um, We'll start in order to abide in Christ. What do we need to know? Alright. Just uh, throw it out there. Popcorn. Just loud enough for Grace to hear. That Jesus is divine. Alright. Jesus is divine. True. The Son. Jesus is the Son. No, we need to know the Son. We need to know the Son. Don't bear fruit. Take it away. Branches that do bear fruit are fruit. Like uh, it's already been said. Branches that do bear fruit are approved. Are approved. Fruit. 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 So that they bear more fruit. Father is glorified when we bear much fruit. Mm. Our Father is glorified when we bear much fruit. It's a choice we need to make. It's a choice we need to make. Abiding Christ. We ask for 
Jesus' name, we will receive. That we are his friends. We are his friends. Jesus. Jesus has loved us. Meditating on it and then doing his words, Good. applying it. Good. Remember the world will hate you. Remember the world is what? Will hate you. Will hate you. Or may hate you. Hmm. Love one another. We have that. 
think that's number three. Yep, we said that. Bear witness. <coughs> Bear witness by the Spirit. You can add by the Spirit. You go to by the Spirit. Okay, that's good. Qualifier. All right. See God's work in our life and respond. See God's work in our life. One or two more. Yes. Go see him. Praise him. Okay. Up to you. What do we need to be? Right. Oh, then. Oh, here we come, ladies. Willing to be pruned. <laughs> Willing to be pruned. Yeah. Telling the truth. Telling the truth. Telling the truth. Tell her some truth. Fighting him. By obeying and trusting him. <laughs> yeah. uh, be complete in joy. And verse. Complete in joy. From verse 11. Um, he will have the Holy Spirit. Yeah, these things I command you so that you will love one another. And he's, I just thought it was interesting love one another versus love other people. Like that inter, and I feel like that internal care and unity is also prayed for in the, in the high priestly prayer, John 17. It's not necessarily talking about. Uh, though we are commanded to love others, that is the greatest commandment, to love God, love others, but here it's specifically loving one another. Yes? Well, I 
in verse 17 it says, these things I command you, in other words, abiding, abiding in his love, all these things, I command you, the purpose of the command is so that we love one another. I, I've never seen that. Mm -hmm. Verse 17 says that. Which kind of goes along with if we love him, we'll keep his commandments. Mm -hmm. And so that is a command to do. Yeah. So it's kind of like a circle. Circular. Yeah. Yes. Jesus shows me and appointed me that I should bear fruit. Yeah. It really gives value. Yes. Um, verse 15 says that they're friends with you. We're his friends. We do it for Jesus. Yeah, that's a final statement. Friends of Jesus. Hope over here. abide in my love, uh, you, if you keep my commandments, you'll abide in my love. One of Jesus' commandments to us was to go and make disciples. So if we're not doing that, are we really Jesus' friends? And are we really abiding in his love? Yeah. Um, I'm really challenged by the idea, idea of being complete in joy. Like, am I really complete and joy and recognizing I'm looking I can be looking for other places to be happy but ultimately the place that I can be ha the way I can be most happy and truly fulfilled is by um, abiding in Jesus but also realizing that as we go out this month as people see us will they really see that joy or are we just going to be like hey I just want to tell you about Jesus like blah blah but are we really are really enthusiastic like hey Jesus has changed my life like he's given me purpose and life and hope and I think it's all these tools are great but we have to show that it's real so you point out like these are the rarest friends but he also says no longer servants do I call you because everything the Father made known to me, I made known to you. Uh, and so, like, if we were just obeying without knowing the full intent of how God wants to use us, if we're just being a servant that God desired to actually make known to us as well, so that when we're serving Him, we're serving somebody who knows and understands the mission. And so it brings us into a further level. Because we can just tell the people that we're talking to, hey, do this and this and this. But if we don't share all the Father's revealed to them, they're just obeying orders. Not having this deep friendship, knowing the purpose behind why you don't really do it. Yeah. yeah. It's not like, hey, I gotta tell you this. Mm. My friend. Yeah. Well, good. Man, some great insights. And I trust that uh, this will be something that uh, you'll be able to go over your notes in uh, the days ahead and just be reminded of, of what it means to abide. And I really appreciate that thought that we're. The, the desire of Christ is that, that uh, we're not in and out of the relationship. Uh, it's not something that's, um, boy, I, I, feel, uh, I feel joy every so often. Or um, I'm, I'm really pursuing God's heart when it's convenient. Or, you know, the, these certain times during the week. But that aspect of abiding is, is that we are intent on allowing, yielding to God and His will, letting Christ direct our steps, and understanding that He has, uh, he, he wants this world reached. We know that. That is His will. And it, He's saying, it is essential that we abide. That we uh, are, are walking, I, I 
appreciate, uh, I think it was the first day, uh, Berkey, you uh, just hear uh, 1 John 2, 6. And uh, the emphasis is if we, uh, if we say we abide in him, we'll walk as he walks. And so uh, it's, it's just a really good, clear indicator, okay? We're studying Jesus, how he walks. And uh, so if we're yielding to him, it's like, okay, you know, it's, it's, it's that phrase, what would Jesus do in every situation? So take just a minute. Bear up with the person next to you, and uh, I want you to just uh, um, just share one takeaway from this time, and uh, as well, just mention who is one person you can share that takeaway with. Could be somebody back home, could be somebody here, um, and how will you go about doing it? So just briefly, with each other, take the next uh, uh, minute and a half, and then it's going to be turned over.